Hey, guess right here. Who's here? Please put your hands together for Paula Shore. Hey, it's a lot. Okay, good. Good evening. I can barely see you. Okay, so um, what I remember about the book, ooh, that's fuzzy, is um, that the, the guy who wrote the book and his, what's his name, Randy? His, his mother would introduce him, and for the academics in the room, I found this particularly funny, um, because I, well, anyway, what he said was, his mother would introduce him, and she would say, this is my son, the doctor, but not the kind that helps people. <laughs> and I thought, oh, that's so harsh. But, but he did give some really good advice. And so, in the spirit of that good advice, um, I, when they asked me to do the last lecture, I thought, oh, well, you know what the next word I said was. Anyway, um, I was trying to think about what would be a really important thing to share with you guys about that I had learned over the years and maybe save you some time. Sometimes I tell you guys that, you know. You don't have to repeat my stupid mistakes. You can just go do the smarter thing I figured out later. And so this would be one of those smarter things that I figured out later. Um, and so I picked just, I was like, what, what do I call this thing I'm going to ask you guys to participate in? And I finally just decided, well, it's, the idea is that we want to be here now. And some of you are thinking, well, I'm here already, right? Uh, but we're going to talk about that because the reality is that we aren't here very much sometimes. So let's see, what have we got? I've got, does this work? Yay! Okay. So, when I talked to some of my wonderful colleagues who have already done this presentation, I said, what did you do? How did you decide? <coughs> and some of them said, well, something I don't usually talk about in class. Uh, okay. Uh, something really important. 
important that I want you to know that's definitely this. And something that can make a difference in the quality of your life. For me, this has been true. And this is some information that I'm going to share with you that you would never have gotten in any of my classes. It's not about business, it's not about spreadsheets, it's not about ratios, it's not about SWOTs. And for those of you who have no idea what those things are, that's okay. But it's about a whole different part of how I think about the world uh, that is with me all the time. And so that's what I decided I would share with you. Because it is all of those things. Kind of check those boxes. So yeah, it's all of those things. And if you, how many of you have had me for class? Almost everybody. Okay, so you're used to this kind of suffering. Okay, good. Um, so I'm going to ask you to do stuff that's going to make you a little uncomfortable, maybe, because I'd like to have you do stuff. You know I'm all about the not just tell you, but have you do, so you get some real practical experience in it. And really, I can talk about this, and it'd be really boring. It's a lot more interesting if we do. So we're going to do, which is the warning. That's the cat guy. Heads up. I'm going to ask you to do some things that are going to make you, not you're not going to stand up and wave your arms or anything weird, but I do want you to participate and get to the best of your ability. So we'll kind of get to that in a minute. So why this topic? Well, what I learned about myself over time was I wasn't very present. I wasn't very in the moment. Uh, what does that mean? That means that when I was with people, sometimes I wasn't paying attention to what they're saying. One of the jokes we have around my house is when I hear my wife say, so what do you think? And I have no idea what was happening before that. That's a really weird way to start a conversation, right? It means I was not listening. I was not present. It could also mean I thought she was talking to the cat. But anyway, what I learned was that I wasn't very present. I was usually somewhere else. I was thinking about where am I going to be? What am I going to do? When I get out of high school, when I get out of college, when I get my first job, when I get my promotion, when I get married, when I, when I, when I, when I. Do you guys think like that sometimes? Yeah. It's really um, frustrating because then a whole lot of your life happens and you're not actually there. That's kind of what I've learned. Um, I found it hard to connect with people. When I have this internal chatter happening, it's really hard to stay connected to people and have good interactions with them if you got all this noise. Um, for me, it was often future-oriented. Part of that's about my history. Um, I grew up in a family that didn't function very well, so a lot of what I was thinking about was, when I get out of this house, when I am a grown-up, I'm going to do this different. And I, was, I spent a lot of time thinking about that. Um, not very much positive. A little bit past, past thinking about what happened, replaying what happened, um, usually negative which is not helpful. And it was always about doing whatever I was going to do next, whatever I was going to do, 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 do. And it was not necessarily what was going on in my head very kind or very positive. So what I decided to do was try to give you a little bit of a tool tonight, something to try out. It may fit, it may not fit, but you won't know unless you try. And the tool that I'm going to give you, we're going to practice it three times, so you can count. For those of you who are like, how much longer? If you count, oh, this is the second one, this is the third one. Um, so I can help you just kind of try it out in a few different ways, this thing. Um, now, I'm going to teach you or talk to you, teach you is kind of a silly word. I'm going to guide you through the idea of the simplest, hardest thing I've ever done. Simplest, hardest thing, which is to be here now. Instead of shooting off somewhere, what the Buddhists call it is the monkey mind. It's like swinging around in there, going all these different places. And you may get a sense of that as you listen to the inside of your head as we go through this. So being here now, what does that mean? And I put monkeys in here because, you know, we're just monkey mind, that, okay. So I also thought that I know you're going to have those damn phones. And I want you to use them. So we're going to use them off and on through the whole thing. So you can have them out. I know some of you I haven't used terribly in class for having your phones out. But you're going to have them out now because I need you to respond. And we're going to get to see what happens when you respond. So let's see. We'll start. Cross our fingers. This should work. We're going to start with a simple check-in. Why are you here? So I think you just text. Let's get started. It'll start showing up when you start putting stuff in. Why are you here?
hopefully they'll start talking first. Ah, look at that, wow. It'll take up to 100. I don't think there's 100 people here. Okay. As more people add, isn't that interesting? Wow. Okay. <laughs> okay, so a third of you because I told you. More people are entering. Is everybody getting it okay? Is it working all right? Okay. Everybody in? Are we happy? All right. Well, that kind of tells me what I, what, who you are as far as this goes. Um, thank you for the friends that made you come. How about that? Okay, so this is why you're here. Are you familiar with the term mindfulness? I hope that's just one person. Are you familiar with the term mindfulness? Isn't it interesting how it moves around every time somebody inputs something? So it sounds like God. A strong 60% of you, ish, have some sense of what we're doing here. Hold is full. Oh, you gotta be quick. There must be over 100 people here. All right. So, some of you say, yeah, I think so. Well, that's what we're going to be talking about in kind of a uh, practice mode is what mindfulness can be. Ah, so have you ever done a mindfulness practice before? And that would be anything like meditation or like, if you, have you taken a yoga class? Yoga class is in a pose called Shavasana. We lay there and you mellow out. That's one of those things. So count it. If you need to change your answer, change it. Because you have, in fact, participated. Okay. Hold, hold, wow. Okay, good job, you guys. This is working out. Everything's working. That's always a worrisome thing for me. So, first of all, the idea of mindfulness is not new. It's new to us recently. There's a whole bunch of uh, information lately about ooh, mindfulness. But the reality is it's been around for thousands of years. The idea of, I mean, it's even documented in things like the Old Testament. Be still, know that I am God. That silence tells you something. Um, one of the, uh, Rumi was talking about the quieter you become, the more you are able to hear. Do you know who he is? He's a Persian poet and a Sufi Muslim. Um, the quieter you become, the more you are able to hear. So the idea is that we try to, in mindfulness, maybe wind ourselves down a notch or two, kind of calm down a little bit. Um, so we're going to try. We try. Some people say, was well, it the same as prayer? Is it the same as silence, stillness, movement, meditation? Is it breathing? Well, it starts with breathing. But all of those things are sometimes what you could call mindfulness or being present. So let's see. So why should you care about this? Why are you here, right? Why should you care? Because that's one of my favorite things to talk about in classes. Why, why are you here? What do you need? from this, or what could you get from this if you feel so inclined? Well, do you want better outcomes and decision making? Because we often do that from a much better place if we are present, if we are grounded. Uh, better self-management and understanding. Have you ever just gotten so wound up and then you do something really not you and you come back and go, whoa, what was that about? Well, part of that was probably because you weren't present Grounded. Some of the stupidest things I've ever done were because I wasn't plugged into myself. I was reacting to other people. So it gives you a powerful tool there for self-management. Uh, better relationships. We all want to get along better, right? Wouldn't that be novel? If we could all get along better? Yeah. And so that provides that platform for you. Uh, one of the things that uh, we talk about a lot in the area of the mind and how the mind processes and what it what it does with thought is it it's a learning loop and it kind of the more you think something the more you believe it the more familiar it gets the more the more the more so whatever you're practicing whether it's 
a sport you are doing, or a practice mentally that you're doing. Anything you practice, you get more of. Anything you ignore, you get less of. And so we're gonna kind of do that. So just for a minute, you all have an inner dialogue, right? You hear it sometimes, oh my God, I can't believe I did that. Or, wow, that was great, look at that, look what I did. Just for a minute, think about what you hear. I'll just kind of be quiet for you to think.
that we have that's not just words. We miss that if we're not plugged in, if we're not present. Um, and the tough part is, while we're living in the future, that's where I spend a lot, a lot of time, or we're living in the past, looking back at what we did, we're missing what's happening right now. And that should be obvious, but you know, when we get off in our heads, it's not anymore. And it just kind of ends up being lost. And I can look back on my life and know that there were really specific times that I wish I'd pay a little more attention. When my nieces were really small, they were at our house because my step-siblings were very, very young married people, like 19, 20, and they immediately started having children. And they weren't really quite ready to be parents, um, so they would drop the kids off with grandma and grandpa, and I was at home going to college, so the grandbabies came to our house. And I wish I'd paid more attention. They're grown women now, children of their own. It's over, I can't do it now. I can enjoy them today, but I had the opportunity when I was giving them a bottle or playing with them or interacting and teaching them new words or watching them do silly stuff like all little kids do. I was busy thinking about when I get out of here, when, I, when I'm done, when I graduate, when I'm married, when I'm out, and I miss them. And it's not, it's not something to go get back. So that's really important. And I kind of want to put it out there for you because you're kind of on the cusp of a lot of changes. And it would be really cool if you were able to hold on to more of that. So you remember it. And so you can keep it for later. So when you aren't listening, where do your thoughts go? Mine usually go to what's the worst possible thing that could happen. Any of you guys do that? Yep. I tell you what, I can catastrophize into the next universe. I'm so good at it. Um, if, if something happens and I'm just driving in this dark, I'm pretty sure I'm going to hit a deer. So I'm pretty, I'm watching for deer and raccoons and possums and stuff. I drove from Lawrence, so, you know, it was dark. It's high entertainment. Um, but just try to notice as we go along tonight, where does your thinking go? You go back to that homework that's due, or the final, or the paper you haven't gotten written yet, or your, uh, your relationship with someone. It's going well, going not well. Either way, it can be equally obsessive, right? Get those all, all going there. So just kind of pay attention. So now, one more time, let your mind wander. See where it goes. Just take a few breaths. Has the monkey left? The monkey mind wandered. Okay, let's see where it went. Let's do it again. So I want you to pay attention. How much time do you give to the noise in your head? I want you to take a little bit of time right now to do that. Where'd it go? Somebody wants to go to Rio. <coughs> yeah, it's Carol. <laughs> Hi, Carol, where are you? <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> Winter. In a positive way or a negative way? Which? Positive or negative? Homework, man, homework just keeps showing up. You'd think this was a university or something. I saw a Series 7 exam. Who's sitting for the Series 7? Woo -hoo. That's a fun test. How are we doing? Keep asking, you're not there yet. Somebody wants a break. Mindfully means I'm thinking about it. 
It's really hard. You're going to find out in just a minute. It's really hard. Just to be clear. So, let's start. The fun part. I'm going to put this down and I'll put it in the slides a little bit. Okay, so, first practice. Ready? Get comfortable in your chair. See, I told you, you're going to be a little uncomfortable. It'll be fun. Now, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. You can not do that. You're not comfortable. You're thinking, I'm going to close my eyes with these bunch of weirdos around me. Okay. Relax. And focus on maybe the back of the chair in front of you. Something that you can look at and just soften your gaze so you're not really paying attention to it. You're just kind of buzzing out. Okay? So you don't want to close your eyes. Just buzz out on the chair in front of you. Are you comfortable? Are you, are you sitting in a way that you're relaxed? Can you feel your butt in your chair? Where are your hands? Are they somewhere relaxed? I'm going to ask you to take some deep breaths. But first, relax your jaw. Just kind of wiggle it around a little bit. Uh-huh. Is your tongue stuck to the top of your mouth? Swallow it and let it drop down. Do you feel warm? Do you feel cold? Is part of your clothing uncomfortable? How are you doing? Now breathe in really slowly through your nose and then out through your relaxed mouth. We'll do that again. Breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. Take another little inventory. Are you relaxed? Can you feel your butt in your chair still? What about your feet on the floor? Can you wiggle your toes? Are you present? I think you are. You look relaxed. One more big breath again. And out through your mouth. One more. Slowly in through your nose. And out through your mouth. Okay, now just kind of bring your focus back to me. That's mindfulness. That's it. See, I told you it was simple, but it's not easy. Did you have trouble keeping your brain focused? Did it want to run off? It might not the first time, but we're going to practice a couple more times. Because doing it once really doesn't do it, right? So, off. Another poll. See, I'm going to keep you awake. So, you just tried it for a teeny tiny second. Give me your reaction, quickly. How did your first practice go? And you aren't going to hurt my feelings if you say, no, I don't like it. That's OK, too. Although so far, no one seems to not like it. OK. Wow. We're almost to 100, I can tell we're growing. It'll tell us in a minute. OK. Hold us and hold. Good job, you guys. OK, so about 3 quarters of you are OK with it. Some of you aren't sure what to think about it yet. So when do you use this tool you just learned? And you know how to do this. You know how to breathe, right? But focusing when you breathe, that's different. Paying attention to where you are in space when you're breathing, that's different. And that's what I'm trying to help you get a sense of. Because you know what? It'll come back and be helpful. It will help you out in some of the most unexpected times. You can just remember, breathe. I just need to breathe. Some of you, I've even said that to you. Maybe. If there's, I'm not sure all the rules in the room. But I've had students in my office who go, I just know what I'm going to do. And I say, sit down and breathe. Have I not said that? Just breathe. During an exam, when you look all wild eyed, I look out and they're like, breathe. breathe. That's where it starts. So when do you use this? If you're anxious, when I was on the road driving here again, thinking about hitting deer and things, there were a couple of times I had to just kind of go, okay, haven't hit a deer. <coughs> need to relax. I'm going to get to Baker. Nothing bad's going to happen. I'm going to be here for this lecture. It's all good. When you're, when you're afraid, when you're fearful, breathing is really helpful because what we do when we're afraid is we stop breathing. Ah, be careful of the mic. We stop breathing, and you know what that does? It shuts off the oxygen to our brain and it triggers a response for, for fight or flight. That's not helpful. It's really not helpful if you're trying to make a good decision. If you're angry, you've heard people say, breathe and then speak. Don't just 
fly off the handle. That's a self-management tool. Breathe, relax, calm down. When you're feeling unsteady, you guys ever get nervous? Time to do a presentation? You got a whole bunch of people who are heading for presentations here pretty soon. In my classes, at least. You're gonna be up there doing a presentation. You feel unsteady, unclear, anxious. Uh, you're feeling lonely. This is one of the things that, that um, there have been some, there's some research on way back in, I say way back, it wasn't that long ago. It was in the, the 80s and 90s. Um, the Medicare Clinic, I don't know if they pioneered the research, but they certainly were involved in it on um, what they call biofeedback. And we all sat in rooms with a little thermometer and we tried to warm our hands. And the way we did that was we breathed and we relaxed and we tried to make ourselves feel warm. It's a wonderful, calming feeling. Um, if you're feeling lonely or scattered or hurt, just having trouble focusing, it's a very simple tool. And you always have your breath, always. So that's kind of what I was thinking about. Good times to use it that way. And if you're happy, if you're having a good time, don't miss it. Take a breath. Enjoy it. Um, some of you know that I got a new hip a couple of months ago. It's been two months now. Ooh, look at that. Um, the other one, not so much. But one of the things that I noticed, I got to spend a lot of time with my mom because she came to take care of me. She's 81. So that was kind of weird. Mom's going to take care of me still. But it was also wonderful because I got to spend time with her and have conversations with her and just be around her. And being able to just kind of go, oh, gosh, this is so nice. I get this time with her. Um, I'm not sure that if that had happened to me 20 years ago, I'd have had that going on, that I could have appreciated that because I just hadn't practiced enough. Um, when you're feeling relaxed, do you guys have an opportunity to just kind of lean back and go, okay, life is really crazy, but it's still pretty good. It's still pretty good. That kind of feeling. Um, when you're with somebody you love, that's an excellent time to be present. Are you listening to them? Are you paying attention to them? If it's a longer term relationship, it's easy to quit paying attention so much. To quit giving them your attention. Yeah. When you're feeling challenged, when you're walking, even when you're walking around outside, or maybe especially if you're a person who likes to be outside, I have students who say, I want to major in business, but I don't want to be in a cubicle farm. And I think, well, you might end up there starting. But the reality is if you want to be outside doing, that may be part of where your being present really happens. When you're out crunching through leaves or smelling green smell, or like when it's just raining, you know that smell, that beautiful fresh smell? Or I'm trying to think in the summer when it gets really green smelling and warm. There's just, being outside can really do that for you. If you pay attention, if you relax and think about it. Um, walking um, to the barn one day, I was just kind of looking at all the different, little, there's a whole bunch of different kinds of grasses and stuff that grow in between. And I planted these one, uh, they're called catnip. And there are certain seasons that different kinds of butterflies come. And the bees love them all the time. But for a while, we had yellow butterflies. And then we had little teeny tiny blue butterflies. I don't know what they were, but they were lovely. And if I had not been paying attention while I was walking outside, I would never have seen them. And it's just one of those simple little, oh, that's really nice. Those are those moments that are always available. You walk outside, and it's cold as hell out there, right? But can you appreciate the cold? Can you feel it on your face? And go, ooh, this is winter in Kansas. Um, I've had people say, oh, I don't want to live in Kansas. It's too cold. Or I have friends who live, the, the line that they drew on the map was anything below I-70, I'm willing to live. Not above I-70. And so they live in Arkansas now, where they got a nice storm last winter. I was like, hmm. can't get away. The universe laughs. But the idea is that they want it to be somewhere where it's mostly warm all the time. If you're here in the Midwest, you're going to get all the seasons, right? Sometimes in one day. So we can appreciate that, right? You can go, ooh, here it comes. There's another thunderstorm. Wow. Have you, had, have you seen thunder or heard thunder in the snow? That's cool, too. That's cool, too. You have to be paying attention. You have to be present, enjoying the weather. Are you still here? I didn't see anybody walk out yet. If you didn't, if you're not, if you oh crap, we are again. She, I'm, I'm on somewhere else again. Where'd you go? Were you still with us quickly? Yes or no? Or did your monkey mind swing away? 
quick, quick. Do you guys like this? Yes. Yes? Okay. Try it out before you use the class. That's, that's a good way to start out with technology, right? A really big group of people that you see if it's going to work or not. Oh. Well, all righty then. Well, we're not all the way in yet, right? But look at that. So it wandered off. That happens all the time. That's what makes it hard, right? It's easy to do something for a little while, and then, oh, there it goes. We get to drag that monkey back. OK. And then it goes again. So it is hard. That's why I said it's a simple thing, that breathing. It's not easy. OK, so we're full. Well, you know, 60% here. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Are you guys starting to notice, though, how easily you can be sidetracked? It's crazy. Our minds are really smart that way. But boy, are they hard to manage sometimes. OK, so we're going to try and reconnect again. Let's try again. It'll get easier. Maybe. We'll see. OK, so relax your shoulders. This is a little bit different way to do it. A little bit different. So get comfortable. Feel your butt in your chair. Feel your butt comfortable in your chair? Do you need to move around? OK. Feet on the floor or not? OK, get that soft gaze. Wherever you're going to look, it's comfortable for your food dries at once. OK, now, wiggle your toes. And kind of just work your way up from your toes, your shins. Are they relaxed? To your knees. Up to your hips. How's your stomach feel? Is it full of dinner? Or is it hanging out there empty, wishing they had dinner? And then come on up. How are you breathing? Breathe in, slowly through your nose, out through your mouth. Try to relax that jaw. Relax. Let your eyeballs drop into your sockets. Just kind of let them relax. Let your forehead relax. Can you feel your scalp? Kind of check it out. Can you feel it? Maybe, maybe not. A couple more breaths. Breathe in through your nose, out. one of these people down here, monkey mind escaped, don't feel bad. That is always the challenge. That is always the challenge. Always. Okay, it's full. So about 75% of you said, okay, I got this. Some of you are getting the hang of it. And some of you are like, no, the monkey's out of control. But that's okay, because you know that now, right? The monkey's escaped. One of the things that people who meditate or spend time thinking about mindfulness know is that when we do any kind of practice that allows us to get more centered, get more relaxed, we function better. So it's kind of like we're giving ourselves a break. We're giving ourselves like a present. I'm going to give myself that three long deep breaths. Or I'm going to give myself two minutes to just sit in a chair on my couch 
my car before I go somewhere. I'm just going to give myself that little bit of time to be here and see what do I need, what do I want, how am I doing, what would be a better decision now that I'm not freaked out. That happens to us sometimes if we just get too much going on. So it is a kind of a, a present that you can give yourself anytime you need it. Um, to give you those better decisions, to give you better self-management. If you're all wound up, grieving is the way to bring you back down to someplace safe, someplace rational, someplace that gives you better perspective. And all it is is grieving, right? To just grieving. But it's hard to give ourselves the time and to actually practice it so it gets more um, reflexive, I suppose you'd say. Um, and that takes time. Did any of you grow up in a family where you did this stuff? Yeah, a few people, okay. Mostly not, though, right? So this idea, I, I, you know, I would love to have my mother sit in the front row because she'd be like, what the hell is she talking about? I don't know, I don't understand. Why is she talking about this? Because she has no idea. The idea of my mother sitting still at any point in time would be something strange. And the same with my dad. They're not folks who would think about, what do I need to do to get myself grounded? They wouldn't even know what that meant. <laughs> and some of you may come from families like that. We're doers. We're going to get out and do. We've got things to do. But being counts too. And being able to be present makes a difference. Uh, what we do know is that the more you think things, the more likely they are to be part of your life. So anytime you practice, whether it's quieting the noise through breathing, whether it's noticing the patterns. Where do I drift off to? Is it always this one thing? That must be what I'm really needing to pay attention to right now because it keeps coming back all the time. Is there a pattern? Is there something that I should be noticing that I'm just not noticing? Because you're, you're, the cool thing about your brain is that even when you're not really paying attention, it's going to keep throwing that thing that matters at you. And then, it, then that's where the breathing happens. If you can do that, you can kind of figure out, oh, I must be more worried about this than I thought. Maybe I should do something different so I can not feel that way. Or not. So let's see. Where are we? Are you here now? God, that's why I'm here. Yep. So let the monkey wander one more time. Let the monkey out over the cage. Let it run. See where it goes. Time look for a pattern. Have you thought about the same thing every time? Did you are you wondering about something? Are you curious about something? Are you worried about something? I know that it's the my experience of students is you worry a lot. Is that fair? Some of you worry a lot. Yeah. Worry is the, a really poor use of an excellent imagination, is what I read once. And I thought, oh gosh, I must have a great imagination the way I worry. I'm really good at it. Um, but it's not all that helpful to me. Um, so I would encourage you to kind of think about where does, where does your thinking go? And if it goes to worry, try and bring it back in there. That's a really um, poor use of your imagination. Yeah. Okay. Again. Again, again, again. Give me some more words. $20? Is that for baseball? Ra those raffle tickets or what? Ice cream. <laughs> I'll let that one go. I won't point that one out. Let's see. Soccer teams, pizza. You guys have a lot of stuff going on in your heads, don't you? Lots of stuff banging around in there. Cool. Good. 8.45, is that what time it is? No, it's 9.45. Okay. Cartoons. Rodney. <laughs> Did I say it right? Rodney? Let's see. A little cheese. Somebody's thinking about cheese? All right. 
Wow, that's great. But look at how easily you came up with this big list. There's about 100 of you. Obviously, the future and homework are present, right? But look at all the other stuff. Relationships. Costco, okay. So when we think about that, think about that's the kind of pressure your brain is under, right? You've got all that stuff. Yeah, that's a lot of stuff. Of course it's going to wander. So using that little tool, that little breathing thing, first of all, the reason it gives you clarity is because it gives you oxygen, right? Anytime you can feel your anxiety rising, check and see if you're breathing. Because that's usually what happens. Quit breathing, right? You get nervous, you stop breathing, and then pretty soon your hands are sweating, and oh my God, this is bad. That's because your body's going, oh my God, Satan's trying to kill us. They're cutting off our air. <laughs> so breathe. That's part of it. Notice, I'm not breathing. Um, it gives you insight. If you can calm yourself and calm your thinking, things you didn't think of before will pop up. Clear solutions to things that you hadn't considered will happen. Because you made room in your brain. And focus. And I, I read some research a while back that basically said that in spite of what we think about our abilities to multitask, we go, oh, we can multitask. We can do all these things at the same time. What the research says is basically, yeah, we can in fact do all these things at, at the same time-ish, but what we're doing is we're swapping tasks and we do a really bad job. Now, what we also do when we're doing that swapping out is we give ourselves a little boost of adrenaline because that's exciting. And so we feel like, ooh, look at all the stuff I'm doing, and that's cool, and I'm multitasking, and I feel great. That's the adrenaline. If you actually measure what you're doing, not so good. So one of the other benefits of the mindfulness, which I have to use, frankly, at my desk on a regular basis when I'm grading exams, for example, because I'd really rather be a whole lot of other places. If you ask any of your professors what they like least about their job, it's grading. <laughs> Rob says yes. Kevin? Yeah. Yeah. It's the grading. And so what do we really have to do? Okay. I'm going to grade five more. And the breathing is what gets me through it, honestly. Honestly. The focus, forcing the focus to one thing so I can get it done and do it well. It doesn't happen unless I'm breathing, unless I'm present. So, just quickly, our thoughts are our future. So what I really want to bring to you tonight is that you pay attention to the noise that's happening in your head. It's like a tape, it never stops, right? It's all that junk you recorded up to this point in your life as it pertains to you. So pay attention. And if you're not sure, that's the time to sit back. Even if it's just to stand in the elevator and maybe or something, take a breath or two. You can't do anything else, right? Sometimes you're just stuck somewhere. That's a great time to practice. It's a great time to take advantage of something so damn easy that we've lost track of doing, which is just relaxing and, and breathing and being here. You guys have been doing a pretty good job of being here. Kind of a challenge. Okay, last time. You have practiced three times, right? Okay, so you're like, oh, one more time. <laughs> yes, and you'll survive it, I promise, I promise. And thank you, by the way, for coming tonight. I know some of you were cordially commanded to come, but there are a lot of you here that I know were not, so I appreciate that. For those of you who are, I'm still glad you're here. So let's take a quick moment, one last time. Get comfortable. If you need to adjust, what are you doing with your hands? Are your hands comfortable? One of the things I've noticed is I like to clutch my hands like this. Sometimes my mother does that. I wonder where I got it. Um, so think about relaxing. Relax your shoulders. Are your shoulders tight? If you've been spending a lot of time with the computer, they may be clear up under your ears. Pull them down. Soften your gaze. Relax your arms. Relax your fingers. Wiggle them a little bit. Wiggle your toes a little bit. Let them relax. Are you warm or cold? Are your clothes comfortable? Swallow. Relax your jaw. Breathe in. Thank you.
your toes, or they still there? Are your hands warm or cold? Kind of move around. How's your back feel? Your shoulders? Are they relaxed? How about your forehead? Can you make it smooth? Make it relax? Can you relax your hair? Relax your scalp.
it's so simple, right? It's so simple. So this is your takeaway. Breathe. That's it. Be here. As much as you can, as you move into your life and you leave here, and all the great things you're going to do, I hope, and that I get to hear about, you're going to email me about, you're going to see on the website, all that good stuff. Remember, take a breath. Give yourself that break, and you will be better. You will feel better. I just thought that was awesome. So, that's all I've got. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much, Paula.